their benefits and their limitations. So I've got here the difference between 5 degrees and 10 degrees is equal to 5 degrees. And the difference between 15 degrees and 20 degrees is equal also to 5 degrees. And that difference of 5 degrees is equal across both uh, terms. It's meaningful. You can interpret as an equal difference of 5 degrees. But what you can't do with an interval scale is say that 20 degrees is twice as warm as 10 degrees. And the reason you can't say that is that the zero point in the Celsius scale is not actually zero. That's just the point at which water freezes. There are many, many, many degrees below Celsius that are negative. And so, in the scheme of things, the difference between 10 degrees and 20 degrees is really not that much when you consider that the temperature in the world can go as low as in the minus 60s. I don't know what the record is, but it's probably in the 60s, maybe minus 70. So there are many, many degrees below 10 and 20 degrees. So the difference between 10 and 20 is definitely not that 20 degrees is double 10. It's really, in the scheme of things, not that much of a difference. But we don't really don't know what the zero point is in the Celsius scale because there's no sense of what exactly a meaningful zero point is in the Celsius scale. What does it mean to have zero temperature on the Celsius scale? It's not known. And so we can't talk about twice differences, but we can talk about differences between values along the continuum being equal or different. Now, what kind of statistics do we perform on uh, interval data? Well, Pearson correlation is a common one, so we could calculate the correlation between IQ and SAT scores, probably expected to be positive. Temperature of room and SAT scores, maybe in this case we might expect a negative correlation. As the room becomes much more uh, warm, people tend to perform less well. So those are two examples of uh, Pearson correlations, which, again, this is advanced, you probably don't know what a Pearson correlation is, but when I know I'm dealing with interval data and I want to measure the association between something, I know that I should use the Pearson correlation. And the only way I would know that is that I can look at an IQ score and I can determine whether what scale it's measured on, NACT, SAT scores, so ratio. This is the last level of measurement, and it's the most informative level, in, level of uh, measurement because it incorporates everything interval does, plus it actually has a natural zero point. And so it's meaningful to say that someone has uh, zero on a ratio scale. So they have the total absence of the attribute measured on the ratio scale. It doesn't have to be about people. It can be about objects. It could be about anything. The implication is we can express differences uh, between two values as a ratio. And what that means in practice is that we can say things like someone has two times or twice as much something on a ratio scale uh, more than somebody else. So let's look at examples. Height and weight. There is zero height and zero weight. And it's meaningful to say that uh, there is a zero height for something. Or number of times someone has left a country. That's a really uh, meaningful ratio scale because some people will score zero and it means something to score zero on an item like number of times someone has left a country. Number of items recalled on a memory test would be an example of a ratio scale because again people can score zero on a memory test particularly if somebody has a head injury Reaction time is a ratio scale. Number of times you stalk someone on Facebook is a ratio scale. Now, theoretically, you can score zero, but my hunch is that anyone who's over the age, under the age of 50 uh, probably would not score zero on that item. So ratio statistics. Pearson correlation, again, just to remind you, Pearson correlation was used on the interval statistic as well. And I'm going to point something out in a minute about that. So we could estimate the correlation between height and weight. I believe it's 0 0.70. You can measure the correlation between income and the number of trips abroad. 
So income, again, people can score zero on income. And it's a continuous scale.